Hey, it's Adrian, and today I'm reviewing the Comica CVM WM100 Plus. So this is a dual um, wired lavalier mic system, so this is great for interviews, but you can also use it if you're just gonna be like a solo and only sometimes you need that functionality. So let's get into it and see if it's worth it for you. Okay, so if it's your first time here, my name is Adrian and I do um, a lot of gear reviews and camera gear reviews. So if at any point in this video you find it helpful, um, you know, please consider liking and subscribing. Okay, let's get into the review now. So in the package, you get this carrying case. Um, when you zip down this first part, that's where all these like accessories go that I've taken out. And then when you unzip the second part, this is where the actual units are. So here's the um, receiver unit and the transmitter units would go here. So that's that. So in terms of what it comes with in the package. So you get the um, 3.5 millimeter audio jack from the um, receiver to your camera. And you can see here, this is threaded. Um, so whenever it screws into the actual um, receiver unit, it's gonna be a snug fit, it's not gonna come up. In terms of the lav mic, so this is what it looks like again, it's with this um, threaded uh, end there, connector. And this is what the head of the lav mic looks like. So if I take out the foam insert here, you can see it's kind of, it's a sizable one. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, it is easy to put it on and I have another lav mic because um, I did a range test. And this has the um, windscreen, dead cap, whatever you want to call it. And it has this kind of like drawstring thing here to just pull it tight. So that's pretty basic. Um, it also comes with a micro USB charging cable. And this is good for powering the unit externally. So I would think um, you're most likely gonna be hooking it up to the um, receiver because you're probably not gonna want this plus a power bank connected to whoever's uh, wearing the, the uh, transmitter. So you can see here on the side, let's see, that's the um, port to charge that. Now, one thing to keep in mind is I did read in the manual and they did say that if you're gonna be using the external power source, um, see it's showing to hook it up to a power bank, um, I think you shouldn't be hooking it up directly to the wall because it does mention that you can get some uh, noise. So just keep that in mind. If you're experiencing that, that's probably what it is. And as well, you know, you could just run it on batteries, which is what I did for my testing and I had zero issues. Now you also get, um, it's a XLR cable and this is for like camcorders. I don't have any of those devices, so I won't be able to test this. Now it also comes with um, belt clips. So if you wanna attach it to the back, and I've put it on the back of one of these units so you can see what that looks like. And lastly, you get the um, cold shoe uh, insert. So you could just put that onto your camera, screw this into the back of the receiver here and mount it on your camera. Okay, so in terms of the units themselves, so these are very lightweight units. Um, they're made out of a uh, plastic material. Um, so they're quite light. It, it doesn't feel like, you know, like a heavy duty type of metal thing. So that's good or bad, depending on what you like. If you like a really light setup, then it's good for you. If uh, you're prone to dropping things, then it's probably not very good. Now I did um, weigh these and the transmitters without a battery, they're um, 80 grams. And then once you have the battery, 108 grams, and they take two AA batteries, which I can show you here. There you go. Um, oh, another thing is when you open the battery compartment, um, this is kind of secured here, so you're not gonna lose that. Um, the receiver is about five grams more heavy than the transmitter. So again, not, not a very heavy setup. Now, go um, looking at the receiver. So on the receiver, I'm just gonna turn it on right now. The power button's here. Hold that for a while, power's up. So on the receiver, um, you have this little hole here. That's where you put in the belt clip. Um, you have the, uh, the one eighth inch here for screwing in um, you know, whatever you want for the hot shoe. Other side, you have that micro USB charging cable. Now, the top of the unit, so you have um, the antenna for 
uh, transmitter A and transmitter B. And you can see here, um, there's the output. So this is where you would run that 3.5, whoop, lost focus there. This is where you would run the 3.5 um, audio cable from the um, receiver to your camera. And there's also a um, headphone here if you have a cameraman so that they could audio, uh, sorry, monitor audio in real time. Now, looking at the front of the unit, so you can see it shows you um, the signal strength for group A, group B, um, which would just be each of the transmitters. Now, you also can see there's a battery level um, and it also shows you real-time audio monitoring for group A, group B, it shows you channels. And this, is, this has four, up to 48 channels. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on one of the transmitters. And now you can see the um, audio level, you know, it went up a little bit, but right now there's nothing actually plugged into the mic, so it's not gonna pick up much. Um, but it, like, I just wanted to show how quick it is to pair so you could see um, the light showing that it is paired. Just quickly um, going into the options here and um, I actually found it quite easy. Um, this is pretty user intuitive. Um, it's going to be a bit difficult for me just going off the camera, but basically um, if you hit the set button here, um, sorry, you just hold that down. And this is where you can go and you can start making changes on the screen. Now, if I just get out of the set and I use these arrows, let's see, you can see it's going through. So there's a stereo mode, um, a group setting. Let's go back to the stereo mode really quickly. So if I go back to the stereo mode and I hit set, so I have to hold it down. Um, you can see I can switch it from stereo to mono. I'm gonna leave it on stereo. Sorry, I keep switching the focus on here. Um, just a bit hard to see. Let's hit that. Okay, there we go. So um, the difference here is if it's in mono, um, if you have one or two of the transmitters going for the wired mics, um, it's gonna just put it all on one audio channel. Um, if you set it to stereo and you have both um, transmitters powered on, then it's gonna split the audio into, you know, like a right channel and a left channel. So that could be beneficial if you wanna be able to, you know, autom um, individually adjust the audio coming from left or right. Okay, so going back into the settings. So there we go. So you can change the um, that to stereo or mono. And I believe if you set it to stereo and you only turn on one transmitter, it just defaults to uh, mono. By, uh, default, sorry. Now you have the group setting, um, power on. So I think that's for the auto sync. You can set the default um, volume. I just left it as 12. That's what it came with and the audio sounded good to me. You have an auto scan and I believe I read in the manual if you're doing the auto scan, they have to be within 30 centimeters of each other for that to work. The backlight that's addressable to, you know, I think five seconds, 15, 30, and 60. So I have it on 60 and you can reset it and um, check the version from our number. And that's all there is with this. And the handy thing is you can see here, it does show the battery level for um, both transmitters. I only have one turn on. That's why you're only seeing for group B, um, this little battery icon there. And once I plug in the lav mic, that's where you would see the real-time um, audio monitoring there. Okay, so looking at the um, transmitters now. So the transmitter, it's pretty much the same. Um, there's just only one antenna here. So you have that micro USB charging port, um, the 1 8 thread, if you wanna put anything in there, um, the holes if you wanna put the belt clip. And in terms of the front of this, so let me just turn the light on. Okay, actually let's go in here first so you could see you have your um, mic input, so that's where I, you would screw in the wired lav mic, and I'll do that right now. And then just screw that in. And once that's in, you can see, I can't, I can't pull that back out, so that's great. Um, you also have a line in, um, and what that does is you could like plug in like another audio source. Say you wanted to have background, music really faint or something while the interview is going on, you could do that. Um, and 
I didn't mention it, but there's an IR um, uh, receiver here, so that's to connect both the transmitter and receiver. And now let's look at the actual screen. So going into the settings here, let me get that closer. So going back through the options here, you could see you could set it um, group A or group B or put them on, both on the same group. In terms of the low cut filter, I have it on low, but if you hold set, then you have the option to change that to high okay, I'm gonna, or off. I'm gonna leave it back on low. Sorry, I know I'm catching focus like in weird places. Forgive me. Now the transmit power, I have that on high. And the reason why is when I was outside doing the range test, like I was walking pretty far away. Um, and they do recommend that if you're gonna be, I believe over 160 feet to set it to high. Um, and if you're under 160 feet, you can set it to low. Obviously if it's set to low, you're gonna save battery um, power, but I just have it set to high right now. Um, you can also enable muting, and to mute, you would just short press the power button. You can see it says mute there. And you can change the backlight setting, um, reset everything, and check the firmware as well. So, exactly the same on both units. Now, battery life is rated for up to six hours. Um, I put in like new batteries in all of these and it's been okay so far like <laughs> they're not great batteries they're just like really generic batteries and it's been set to the high transmit power um, and I believe the two transmitters um, they're at like one or two bars and the receiver I believe is at uh, two bars one or two bars also so I mean it's okay I have had them running for a while like I said at full transmit power the other thing is I was taking some photos of them, so I had the backlights up to a full 60 seconds. So I've been really draining them. So, um, but if it's gonna be a concern to you, then you know, do the um, external power thing with the power bank. Back in the audio you're hearing is coming directly from the, um, the Comica CVM WM100 Plus. So I'm not gonna edit any of this audio, um, just so you can hear what it actually sounds like um, naturally. So for reference, this sound is coming from, um, sorry, it's plugged into a Sony a7 III and the audio input level on that is 12. On the actual Comica system, the audio input is 12 as well, which is the default. And what we're gonna do now is um, I'm gonna go do a range test and see how well it um, does there. So in the manual, it says you can do 100 meters um, if you have a clear line of sight or 60 meters if there's obstacles. And in feet, I believe that's around 320 feet um, without obstacles and about 200 feet um, with obstacles. So let's see how that works. Okay, so pretty cold out there today, but I'm gonna try to do a range test. So um, I have both lav mics hooked up right now. Um, I said I preferred McDonald's coffee over Tim Hortons in Canada. As a result, I have no friends. so. I'm gonna have to do this test using both lav mics. It's in mono mode right now. Sorry, stereo mode. It is in stereo mode, so you can separate right and left audio channels, but since it's just me, um, it's gonna be the same audio. So let's just do a range test. Um, I've set the mic to high power mode, so it should have max transmit power. The other thing is, I noticed with other wireless mics, when I turn my back away from the um, receiver, the audio might cut in and out, but then when I turn back around and I have a clear line of sight, um, it should pick up the audio. So let's see how that works. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Clear line of sight. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. One, two, three, testing. Clear line of sight. Testing, one, two, three. 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 Clear line of sight. Now, I'm going over 
all the way to the next street over. Testing one, two, three, clear line of sight. So if it was cutting out, it should start picking up the signal as I'm walking towards the camera. So let's see how that goes. Of course, I have no camera person to help me monitor the audio. So I won't have any clue if this is cutting in and out till I go back inside and listen to the audio. Um, it is very windy today, um, but I have the two wind screens here, the wind muffs. So let's see if that does a good job um, kind of negating the wind. All right, let's test that out. Okay, so I'm back and I'm actually pretty impressed with the results. So I've tested previously in the past the LensGo wireless system and the Rode Wireless Go uh, mic system. And one thing I noticed with the LensGo system is when I turned my back away from the unit so I didn't have that clear line of sight, um, I think the audio cut off like within maybe 15 feet, even if I remember correctly. And then every time I would turn around to establish that line of sight, the audio would come back. With this unit, I believe I was able to walk for like, you know, 70 to 100 feet, my back turned completely away, and I didn't notice any audio drops. So that's pretty good. Um, and I think for most use cases anyway, you're not gonna have, you know, your subject that far off away from the camera where it's gonna be hard to even have them in frame anyway. So I think for most applications, it works very well. Okay, so now the um, receiver, it's set to stereo mode. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna record audio with this um, lav mic here, which is group A. And then I have the other um, lav mic in this room and that's gonna be group B. So, you know, right channel, left channel. And the reason why that's beneficial is if you have someone who's talking like low in the interview and someone who's talking um, maybe at a higher volume, then in post, you can specifically, um, you know, target one channel and increase the, the audio um, in, you know, in that channel, just, just so you could even everything out. So I have a crude way to test this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a video on my phone and put the phone in the other room. And then I'm gonna walk and close a door so that I can be certain this um, microphone isn't gonna pick up what the other one there is. And you should hear both audios going at the same time. So let's try that now. So the phone is down and I'm gonna hit play. And I'm gonna go into another room now and close the door. So here I am door closed and I can't hear anything from the phone so I know that I'm completely separate I'm behind the door so let's see how that worked out okay so that test worked pretty well um, I was able to hear what was playing on the phone and um, what I was speaking while I was behind the door in another room I did set the phone volume a little bit lower so it wouldn't overpower what I was saying so it works great so another um, great feature of this is, like I was saying, if you're doing like an interview, so you have two subjects talking, one is um, speaking a bit on the lower end than the other, what you could do is you could take the audio from one lav um, system, um, kind of like in a right or left channel, and then boost that audio. So to do that, when you're in the um, receiver, you would just set it to stereo mode, then you would make sure um, each transmitter, they're on a different group, so group A and group B. And you can see from the test I did having the cell phone play audio in one room while I went behind a door in another room. Um, it picked up audio from both and I was behind the door so the, and behind the camera as well. And I didn't have any um, audio drop. So it works very well there, keeping in mind that I had high transmit on. So um, would I recommend this? Um, yes, I definitely would recommend it. Um, I would say, like for me, the audio quality is on par with what I use with the Rode Wireless Go system. And that system is, um, I believe like around 300 Canadian. Um, so it's comparable, it's almost the same amount as this system, but again, you only get one transmitter, one receiver. Um, with this, you know, you have the option to use it either, you know, one subject or two subjects. So you could still just buy it, use it for one subject if it's you most of the time. And then in those rare events where you need to mic two people, 
you always have that option. Um, I would say maybe yeah, run with extra batteries um, just in case. You know, you could do the external um, power bank thing, but then you're probably not going to want your subject to have this clipped on plus, you know, a cable plus a power bank. Um, but for the receiver, that you could definitely run with a power bank since it's just going to be on your camera. So if this video was helpful, please consider liking, subscribing. I'm always doing these type of videos. Um, if there's any other wireless systems that you've been eyeing um, and you'd like me to test out, let me know. I can see if I can get a hold of it to test it and see how it compares. Um, I'm always curious about these systems because, you know, I don't have really high-end stuff. Like, um, ex aside from the road system, you know, I know there's higher-end like Deity, um, Saramonic has good stuff too. But I don't like to just default to that, especially if, you know, I'm not going to use this all the time. Um, you know, I don't want to invest all that money. And then it seems kind of like a waste to just have it sitting there if you're not going to get a lot of use out of it. So I'm always interested in trying, you know, other brands, seeing how, you know, how it stacks up to the, you know, the big guys or what kind of results you can get from it. And most of the times I've been pleasantly surprised with most of the like third party brands, if you want to call them that, that I've been testing. So um, stay tuned for my next video. I'm always doing these type of um, gear reviews and camera, um, camera gear reviews, okay? Um, see you in the next video, bye.